Hello Scorpio, welcome to my channel. This is Victoria at Radiant Moon Tarot. We're here doing your 2022 yearly forecast. If you're new to my channel, hello and welcome to you. If you're returning, welcome back. As always, I'm truly grateful for your likes, shares, subscribes, and your fantastic energy. Just a reminder, this is a general reading. Not everything was going to resonate with you today. We're doing an extended look for your entire year. And there's going to be certain things that probably haven't quite hit your realm of consciousness, so to speak, yet. Okay, so feel free to, you know, uh, to have a look back on this reading throughout the year. Uh, maybe a couple of different points through the year just to have a little quick look, a check-in to remind yourself or to see how far you've come. So um, if you do like this video, by the way, though, please don't forget to give, the, give me that thumbs up by hitting the like button. Also subscribe to my channel if you haven't already. I do monthly readings, love singles, um, you know, career readings, some spiritual readings, some timeless readings, but every once in a while, because I'm also a uh, traditional kind of fortune teller, I sometimes throw in some Gypsy, Kipper, Lenormand, uh, or some Sibylla cards into the mix every once in a while. So a little bit of interesting things. All right, so let's get right into your reading, shall we? So I'm going to pull out a bunch of different um, different cards, different energies. I'm going to pull out a gateway of light activation, see what portal is opening up for you. Pull out an ascended master. We're going to have a look at the eclipse cycles, which are in your sign in the year ahead. And um, we're going to pull out a, I'm going to do a full astral clock for you and using tarot. So major energy for each month throughout the year. So let's get right into it and have a look and flying out of that deck there. Ooh, very nice. All right. So clearly this card wants to be read and we've got the Akashic Records uh, that is opening up for you. This portal is opening up if you've ever been interested in your past life, in um, opening up your personal Akashic Records. All right. This is certainly the year for you. Clearing out old stories, releasing past lives and freedom. So first and foremost, if you uh, want to try and um, access your records, then try doing some uh, Akashic Record meditations. Guided meditations is probably the best way. It will not open on the first try, just so you know. There's some courses that you can take for those as well. Maybe you're looking to, um, you know, have someone uh, look into those professionally for you as well. But this is also a year for expanding your horizons, for higher level of learning, for revisiting your past lives, your um, past in this life and also other lives as well. Clearing out the way, okay, releasing things, letting things go and having this personal sense of freedom and enlightenment that's coming for you. So very powerful energy that is coming in here for Scorpio. Okay. So let's see what Ascended Master is working with you closest in the year ahead. And we have, ooh, we have Ganesh that is working with you. And that brings a big old yes as your answer. Yes, you can. Yes, you can do it. Yes, you can manifest. Yes, you can have new free, new things in your life. Whatever that is, the answer is yes. And with Ganesh representing this card, all right, Ganesh is the Hindu elephant-headed um, uh, overcomer of obstacles, okay? So harness the power of Ganesh anytime you're trying to start a new project, a new endeavor of any kind, and that answer will be yes. You'll, have, you'll find an easier way to overcome obstacles and challenges in your path and just get things done, get things wrapped up, get things started, get things completed, you name it. So the universe is giving you the big old green light to do whatever it is that you set your mind on. Nice. Okay. So let's pull out a couple of angel numbers for you here. Messages for Scorpio, please. Messages for Scorpio. Thank you very much. And we have number four, I am stable. You bring stability and rationality to any situation. You are the rock and your hard work and perseverance make you dependable friend, partner, and colleague. I am stable. Very nice energy. Okay, so watch out for fours throughout your year ahead. 
And we also have 14. Oh, look at that. I am practical. You are open-minded and always up to try something new, yet you, you are wise enough to stop and think before you jump into things. This pragmatic approach helps you, helps ensure your time, attention, and efforts are meaningful. I am practical. Practical. Know when to get going, know when to take a step back, know when to make your plans, and know when to go for the gold. All right, so beautiful energy. And so let's talk about the eclipse cycles in the year ahead, okay? The eclipses, lunar and solar, occur in, for 2022 in Taurus and Scorpio. So you are going to be feeling these eclipses throughout the year in a very, very powerful way. All right, and you're going to, a lot of portals are going to open for you. A lot of life lessons are going to be learned. A lot of things are going to be let go of, and a lot of things are going to be started brand new for you. All right, and that's, you know, that's that Akashic Records energy that's coming in there. The ability to look back on things, the ability to um, release things, let things go, to open up your personal past life records and all of those things. And you know, you may even have the opportunity to start the wheels in motion for something new for your future as well. So a lot of really, really powerful energies. If you're doing any kind of manifestation work in the year ahead, okay, try and, um, and not necessarily center them around the eclipses because eclipses tend to bring a little bit of uh, uh, unstable, a little bit of chaotic energy, especially at the um, at the lunar eclipses, but it all depends how you deal with the moon energies. All right, but uh, as the moon cycles throughout the year, okay, this is just a really powerful year for you to achieve whatever it is that you're looking to do. And if you're on a manifestation journey, okay, or if you're looking into that, this is a great time for you to really harness all the powers of the universe, okay? So let's see what Moonology manifestation cards we've got for you here. Take a reality check, all right? And that's actually very similar to that I am practical energy, all right, is to have a grounded practical approach to something, to, um, you know, look at things from all angles and all perspectives, okay? See the truth in situations as well, all right? Do you need to wrap something up? Do you need to close the door on a certain subject, a topic, or an endeavor? Do you need to try something a little bit different? And when we have that reality check, okay, we see the truth of every situation and we take the blinders off, all right, so you're going to be seeing clearly in the in the year ahead, okay? You're going to be, um, you know, taking different approaches to different things. You're going to know when to, you know, be forceful and powerful, but you're also going to know when to take that step back. All right, so we also have Aquarius energy coming in here also, and this is reflect upon your priorities, okay? And so it's like spirit's really trying to get you uh, thinking about things, okay? And really trying to take those blinders off, see the truth in things, reflect on your priorities is really taking that step back and the ability to really see what is important to you, what it, what means the most to you, where do you really see yourself going? It's like your eyes are being opened, okay? Your dreams can be followed. Right now, is there something that you've been keeping on the back burner, okay? What is, you know, sometimes we need to take a pause for the cause, so to speak, and we need to give ourselves not only just a little bit of reality check, but we also need to prioritize our life, okay? A little bit of time management, priority management, all of those things, okay? And sometimes we need to put ourselves first as well. Are you in the situation where you put other people first? Are you neglecting yourself, all right. Are you, you know, only putting yourself first and ignoring the needs of others, right? It goes both ways. Okay. So when we look at our priorities, we know why we do something. We know our motivations behind things, and then we can get ourselves a little bit more into balance. So let's pull Gaia oracles for you here. We've got ocean of eternal love. Very nice. We've got the moonlight goddess. And we also have achievement coming out here as well. And as I'm looking at these cards, I see the ocean of eternal love is card number 44. And we already said with the angel number four coming out to watch out for fours. I am practical. We have a one, which is new things and uh, uh, new endeavors, but also number four coming out there. And then ocean of eternal love is card number 44. Okay, so fours are really about stability, security, um, a really good sense of self. They're a focus on your work, your career, your home, those things that you value in your life. So and that could certainly be a really big focus for you. All right. Um, the people in your life that make you feel stable. 
Okay, and actually I forgot to mention with the moon, uh, with the uh, eclipse energies, okay, the eclipses throughout the year are going to affect your first and your seventh houses. And your first astrological house is ruled by Mars and Aries. And this is all about the face you put on for the world, your impressions that you give other people. And, you know, this is also about yourself, your personality, your identity, appearance. This is also about new beginnings, your how you approach your life is uh, uh, very much a focus. And it's also your seventh house ruled by Venus and Libra. And this is about your relationships, contracts, um, you know, romantic partnerships, business partnerships, equality, balance, harmony, sharing all of those things. All right. And so it's really bringing you back, bringing you into alignment. Okay. Finding that common ground and really prioritizing, not just you know, how you present yourself to the world, things that you want to get off the ground, things that you want to get started, but also how other people can affect your goals and your priorities, right? Or, you know, do you need to make some changes with the people in your life? Okay, do you have new people coming into your life in the year ahead as well? All right. And again, romantic, business, you name it, friendships, all right, all of those. So your first and seventh astrological houses, in case you wanted to um, look those up a little bit deeper. Book card number 44, Ocean of Eternal Love. This is beautiful. This is bringing things through to completion. This is completing cycles, um, clearing out uh, past karmic cycles even as well, especially with the Akashic Records there. Um, this is getting things finished so you can start something new. This, uh, this brings in a healing energy for you. Okay, so where you've been feeling maybe a little bit kind of lost or you've been feeling as though, um, you know, things have kind of held you back or you've been dealing with some losses or some hurts, this brings in that beautiful healing energy. But this also brings in creativity and fertility as well. So this is really your time to create the life that you want. Are you are you stable and secure where you are right now? Are you in the right job for you? Are you in the right relationships? Okay, and if not, you have the ability to make those changes or to make improvements in your current situation as well so that you can feel solid and secure, so that you can feel as though you've got both feet on the ground, so you don't have to worry about anything anymore either. We have Moonlight Goddess coming out, which is card number two repressed emotions, healing and reflection. So there's a big kind of personal growth aspect um, to your year ahead. Okay, this is a time when you're really digging deep. Okay, you're having a deeper look at things you're really doing maybe even on a journey of self exploration as well. And of course, your tarot card representing Scorpio is of course the death card, which is about personal growth, spiritual growth, endings, new beginnings, transformation and change. And, you know, with the eclipses in um, in your sign in the year ahead, this may just be a huge change uh, year for you, okay? Big changes, little changes, ones of personal growth, a sense of achievement, accomplishment, all right? Out with the old, in with the new for you. But this is also a, a year to heal, to pause, to reflect, and to really know what it is you want, what makes Scorpio tick, right? And then making those changes or taking those steps forward. Because we also have achievement here as well, number 17, which actually relates back to the star card. Moonlight Goddess, by the way, and with the moon energy with the ocean of eternal love, okay? Some of you are certainly on a path of spiritual growth as well. Trust your intuition, okay? But this one is your achievement. Keep focused on your dreams and you know, when you focus, when you know what you want, we've got Ganesh there helping you overcome obstacles and challenges, both internal and external. All right. Keep your eye on the prize. Stay focused on what it is that you want. Where, what are your goals? Okay. What's important to you? And you do have the ability to achieve and accomplish even what previously may have seemed impossible for you. All right. So very wonderful. Very magical, okay, and uh, it's a lot of big energy for you guys, all right. So I'm going to pull out your astral clock now. So what I'm really going to do is uh, these cards right here, this is just the major arcana, all right. So I'm going to pull one major arcana, one major theme for each month in the year. Um, energy is fluid, okay, so depending on you and your path and your journey and how you deal with things, all right, that you can have the ability to speed things up or even slow things down as well. All right. And I'm keeping these fairly general. Okay. With obviously if things focus on love or money or manifestation or whatever, we'll bring those up. But 
And for the most part, we're keeping them just a little bit general and you can apply that energy to your priorities and the important things that are in your life. So I'm going to pull one major arcana for each month and then I'm going to put a secondary card on top of that as well, just for a little bit more detail. So January, February, March, April, May, June, July, August, September, October, November, December. Just move those around just a little bit. Ooh, there we go. All right, and then I'm going to put that right in the middle because the underneath card is your major theme for the year ahead. So, but I'm just going to put a second card on each one of these. January, February, March, April, May, June, July, August, September, October. November and December. There we go. Alrighty, so let's have a look and see your major theme throughout the year. Oh, brilliant. What is that? Look at this. All right. Holy, you guys. Number 17. Number 17. We've got the star card coming out for you as your major theme in the year ahead. Miracles unfolding. The big old yes card. If there's ever a yes card, it is the star card bringing in this wonderful Aquarian energy. Aquarian energy, your ability to overcome, your ability to use an innovative or creative approach on things, your ability to think outside the box, achieve your goals, achieve your dreams, the big old yes card, the card of manifestation, restoration of hope, faith and trust in yourself and in the universe and in the things that are unfolding around you, manifestation energy here, it shows your deeper connection to, um, to the universe and also a balance between the earth and the sky. Trust your intuition very much in the year ahead because the star card shows that some of you are really expanding your spiritual gifts there as well. Okay, so this brings in abundance, brings in success, innovation, optimism. All right, beautiful, 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 beautiful energy. And this is the big old yes card. Miracles happen when the star card comes out. And there you go. Yes and yes. So the universe really is giving you that proverbial green light. And of course, this achievement card is number 17 as well. So this may be a year for you where there's a lot of signs, symbols, synchronicities. We already have a bunch of fours coming out for you. So fours, 17s, and maybe even eights as well, because 17 reduces down into an eight. Certainly is unfolding to be an exciting year for you. January, trust your intuition. This is a great time to expand your spiritual gifts, your horizons with the High Priestess card. This is also a time when, you know, January may be a month for you where you're pausing and you're reflecting on things as well. All right, you're uh, thinking about things on a deeper level. Maybe you're keeping things a little bit quiet. You may also be on the quest for knowledge. The High Priestess um, holds the Book of Knowledge there. So you could be really um, doing some probably expansion of your uh, spiritual knowledge maybe there. But this also shows your deep connection to the universe, okay, to your spiritual side. And, you know, just shows that you have a lot of information, a lot of knowledge and a lot of gifts within you, okay, that can really help you along your journey. The January, January may be that month where you are playing your cards close to your chest as well. You're not really revealing a lot of things. Maybe you're just getting all of your ducks in a row and uh, you're kind of like centering yourself a little bit there and trying to prioritize your life, right? This Aquarian energy here, this reality, reality check energy here, and you're just kind of going within a little bit. You may also be, um, you know, thinking about creative projects or endeavors, okay? Um, you may even be expanding your mind with that Akashic Records energy there also. But the High Priestess brings in a balance between your masculine and feminine, between your spirit and your physical side as well. And uh, also shows your ability to connect with um, the moon energies as well. Uh, show your creative side, okay? And that is coming out here with the Ace of Coins. Wow. All right. So some of you may actually be manifesting a new job, a new um, uh, financial endeavor. Okay. Maybe even focused on your goals in relation to money. All right. The Ace of Coins is usually the first sign of manifestation. It also brings in a little bit of luck. So it brings in the new and it brings in the improved, okay? So some of you may be devising some sort of plan, okay? A little mastermind there on how to make more money. You might just be focused on your values, your goals, 
okay, what you want to materialize into your world, okay, anything involving your material world, your values, all right, maybe you even are on the quest for, again, that knowledge, right? The coins can represent your knowledge as well, all right? Whatever it is, there's the first signs of commitment, prosperity, abundance, and manifestation that come in with the Ace of Coins, okay? So all about the new, okay? So February, we've got the Chariot. Once we finish doing our deep thinking there in January, we're ready to get things going, okay? Chariot shows that you're well on your way to your next journey. You may have figured out what you want. You may have a goal in mind, and now is time to take that next step. Now is the time to put your best foot forward, okay? It shows the stars are aligned for you. The universe is aligned for you. Your chakras are open, okay? Your masculine, feminine, everything is in alignment. You keep this chariot going towards your destiny, okay? Towards where you're meant to be and the reason you get this chariot going is by your own willpower your drive determination to get the ball rolling okay so quiet contemplation turns into bold inspired action the chariot card can also sometimes represent travel so maybe you're making some travel plans or you know moving in some way because it is a movement card okay so if it's not travel it could be uh represent that maybe the ace of coins there you're looking for a new job or something and that may actually involve traveling for business or maybe you need to relocate for something the ace of coins you could also be making a large purchase and, you know, the chariot does, of course, represent a car, okay, so maybe you're, you know, figuring out how to buy a new car on the more mundane kind of level, but you could also be moving into a new house, a new home, maybe even a new city. You could even have a, uh, a job offer, a job opportunity where you need to travel for work, travel for business, okay, whether it's something where you're like an on-the-road salesperson throughout the day or something where you actually need to travel a little bit longer, it could certainly be that as well. So a lot of movement that is available for you in February and this comes out with the page of wands look at that the page of wands first signs of uh, first signs of manifestation okay um, you know it brings in this exciting energy it also brings in a little bit of adventure the page of wands is inspired following passion following goals following dreams and the chariot you know is really about following your passion so you're certainly got a lot of oomph a lot of pep in your step in February the ability to move forward the ability to make change the ability to make improvements improvements, follow your goals, follow your dreams. One of just this, a lot of energy coming in here in February. So, you know, January, you could certainly be recharging your batteries and then February, here you are, it's time to take action. Now the page of wands, um, the page of wands is, uh, does bring in excitement as well. Okay. So a lot of exciting energy that's coming in here for you. But the Page of Wands likes a sense of adventure also. And with the Chariot being sometimes uh, an energy that brings in some travel, again, we have a lot of movement. So you could be plausibly planning a travel, uh, a travel, planning a travel, tra planning a trip, excuse me, whether it's a quick getaway or whether it's a long, well-deserved, probably vacation. Um, then it just it brings in this exciting energy in here for you. So uh, sure, certainly starting out pretty good for you. March, we've got the Empress. Okay, March is the third month. The Empress is the third card. So March may be very important month for you. And this is a time of creation, of growth attracting abundance towards you okay the time to you know really start to enjoy some of the fruits of your labor we've put in a lot of hard work with that chariot card okay we've done a lot of deep thinking okay a lot of connecting with our higher self with the high priestess we're figuring out what it is we want we're taking action and now the empress is where we sit back and we start to see things unfold and we start to enjoy things a little bit the Empress does attract abundance, opportunities, and prosperity in. So your ability to attract abundance into your life is very prevalent in the month of March. With it being the third month and the third card, that's Master Teacher number 33. So you've learned a lot on your journey, but you may be in the position where you are teaching other people something or maybe you are on that still on that quest for knowledge and you're looking to learn a little bit more but number 33 does sometimes represent a bit of spiritual ascension also. So you might want to look up the spiritual meaning and the angel meaning of card number 33 not to mention all these fours. So we've got 4444. Four, four, four. All right, so a bunch of fours coming out there for you too. 
but the Empress is one of fertility, creation, growth, blossoming, abundance, the connection with Mother Earth and Gaia as well. All right, but it also shows you tapped into your um, more feminine side, okay? So some of you might be thinking about family. Maybe you're falling in love or you're starting to think about love. The Empress card also shows um, perhaps the need to take care of yourself as well. All right, always that reminder that sometimes we get so focused on our goals or we spend a lot of time helping other people that we forget to focus on ourselves. So the Empress card shows that you may have an, um, uh, a need Need, okay, and maybe hopefully an opportunity to do a little bit of self love and self care. And this is with the Knight of Swords as well. So Knight of Swords usually brings in some good news, okay? Some communication, ingoing and outgoing. Decide clearly what you want and then get ready to take some action here as well. So you may be getting some really good news here um, in the month of March, okay? And again, we might be with that Empress. Uh, Empress has that ability to attract Okay, so you could be attracting new people, new situations, new conversations, maybe new romantic interests there as well. But whatever it is, that Knight of, Knight of Swords brings in things with speed. Okay, so there is a time to sit back and be open and receptive, and then there is a time to take that action, okay, or to put yourself out there, okay? This can also just show that, you know, once you put the ball in motion, okay, once you do, um, you know, spark some communications and things like that, that you can sit back and you can just allow things to unfold exactly as they should, all right? But that Knight of Swords can also sometimes bring in a little bit of impulsive energy as well, Okay, but it also brings in a really positive mindset. And, you know, and a, a positive mindset, I mean, the power of positive thinking is very, very important. And that Knight of Swords is kind of that go-getter kind of energy and not worried at all about any kind of blocks or obstacles. Okay, that Knight of Swords is like that Dragon Slayer energy, like I'm just going to get her done. Okay, also maybe bring in a little bit of impatience as well, but tempered by the Empress card to... Uh, you know, to bring you back to earth a little bit. So, um, but the Knight of Swords, you could really be on that uh, quest, that journey. Okay, the Knights always go on these big quests, right? And this could be you're on the quest for information, for knowledge, all right? Uh, you might be learning um, some things as well, okay? Maybe you're just learning a lot of things because the Knight of Swords does bring in that excitement and speed, okay? So you could have a lot coming at you in uh, in the month of March, okay? Especially if you're on, um, you know, a spiritual quest or you're opening your mind, all right? You're expanding your horizons there, right? You might just have a lot of information that is headed your way. April. What do we have? Oh yeah. Look at this. We've got the magician energy. So what you think about, you bring about, okay. Your abilities to harness the powers of the universe and manifest things into your material world is incredibly strong in April. Okay. So some of you have been getting yourselves in alignment, all right. You've been balancing your energies, harnessing the energies of the universe on a quest for learning, maybe doing some research on manifestation. And then we have the magician. So you could be doing one of two things in April. Either you are starting on a manifestation journey, okay, you've been doing some research, you've been, you know, uh, getting your ducks in a row, figuring out what's important to you, and the magician is where you're setting your intentions, and you are really harnessing and using all of the resources at your disposal, you know exactly what you want, you're thinking clearly, and you are attracting infinite abundance into your life, and, uh, you know, you do, um, you certainly are on this initial stages of the journey when the magician can also show that your things that you have previously materialized um, manifested into your life are starting to materialize into reality okay so something imminent something on the horizon for you new opportunities doors opening for you you name it always the reminder whenever we do get the magician okay because this does bring in it could simply be your ability to really focus on a task at hand Okay, shows you that if you start any new project, endeavor, or anything like that, that you already have everything that you need and your ability to find and utilize the resources that are around you um, give you that focus, okay, to accomplish something, to complete something even, all right, and it brings in, you know, you know you can start moving forward on the path to success, all right, but the magician also brings in unlimited potential and opportunities to you as well. Always that reminder, what you think about, you bring about as above, so below, okay? 
um, you know, the master of alchemy, okay, turning, you know, turning lead into gold, that kind of thing. All right. And but this reminds you here of your powers of manifestation. We're always in an energy of manifesting things into our life, whether it's conscious or subconscious. And this would be conscious manifestation. And this is a reminder that your thoughts become things. Okay, your ability to create in reality what you vision in your mind is very powerful. Okay, so always manifest from a place of abundance, never from a place of lack. Always manifest from a place of positivity, never from one of negativity. So and if you think of it simply as, you know, um, you know, let's say this is a rose quartz, okay, just keeping it very mundane. We will have a rose quartz here. Let's say you wanted to manifest a rose quartz, okay? You're going to focus on what you want, rose quartz, something semi-polished. This is actually a polished one, um, polished, unpolished. You want something in a specific shape. That's the one that you want. That's the one you want to attract. But we don't want to look at this and say, okay, I want a rose quartz. I do not want a tourmaline. So we don't manifest saying that I don't want a tourmaline. I don't want this. I don't want this right? Um, new people, new loves, let's say a new love, right? I don't want a liar. I don't want a cheater. We never want to do that. We never want to focus on the negative words or on the negative aspects. We always want to focus on, I want, you know, this rose quartz. Thank you universe for sending me a rose quartz. Thank you universe for sending me a person who is honest, who is trustworthy. All right. Who, um, you know, embraces commitment. All right. There's a huge difference between those, those keywords, and so that's that reminder there. So be mindful of your thoughts and your feelings. We always want to also attach positive feelings and emotion to our manifestations. Oh, wow. And there you go. So your ability to harness and work with the moon energy, very prevalent. The moon is Pisces energy, but of course, we do have eclipses throughout the year in your sign and also in Taurus. So this really shows that if you harness the power of the moon, you can manifest your unlimited potential. The moon also shows the ability to bring things from your subconscious into your conscious, to bring things out of the darkness into the light. There may be some truths that are being revealed. There may be some fears that are being faced, okay? Um, and sometimes when we do have that moon, it is about, you know, figuring out what you're afraid of, facing your fear and forging forward anyway. And sometimes the most exciting things that come about in our life are things that we felt a little bit nervous about or we felt a little bit afraid about, okay? But ultimately the moon is also about completing cycles, okay? So you have the ability here to release anything that's no longer serving you and forge forward with something newer, something shinier, something brighter, something more exciting, all right? But certainly the powers of the moon are here for you to harness and the magician with the moon is moon manifestation 101 right there. But again, figure it out clearly what exactly that it is that you want and you can harness all of those wonderful powers. And the moon also brings about a creative energy as well. So your ability to create the magician is about creation. Okay, so creation, creation, fertility, huge months for you there in March and April. May, we've got the fool. Look at that. Okay, a lot of new things coming in for you, new, improved um, adventure, excitement, um, and the fool brings about an exciting energy. And you know, the thing is, I mean, these cards are a little bit backwards because the fool usually comes before the magician, but that's perfectly okay. Because if you set your intentions on a manifestation journey with the magician card, okay, you set your intentions, then you need to let go. So set your intentions with the magician, let go Okay, set them forth free, okay, into the universe, okay, when usually at the full moon, and this card represents a full moon, okay, so set your intentions at a new moon, release them with the full moon, and then trust, the fool, trust that everything will be working out for you, that trust that things will come to you, trust that uh, opportunities will present themselves, the right people, the right situations, everything at the right time. The Fool shows releasing any kind of inhibitions, anything hell holding you back with the moon. If you're facing your fears, you're releasing anything that's, you know, been in your past, okay? Anything in your present, you're facing it, you're dealing with it, you're moving forward. And now you yeah, got that spring in your step with that fool card. 
feeling good, having this sense of adventure and just not necessarily knowing what the future entirely holds, but being really excited to be part of it. Okay. Um, sometimes with the fool, we need to be a little bit aware of maybe making some impulsive decisions sometimes. Okay. And so we go right back to this moon energy to have a reality check to know your priorities. Okay. Sometimes we need to take a step back. All right. Before we forge forward, but the fool just shows that, you know, a sense of freedom, all right, a sense of beautiful release, okay, and there may also be situations where you just need to go for it, you just need to take a leap of faith, you just need to believe in yourself, you just need to take that step forward, all right, the Fool card can sometimes also um, uh, also represent some travel as well, okay, and it is a movement card, it is one of taking the first steps towards something, okay, so, you know, but some of you could certainly be going on a little bit of a journey, right, because the major arcana starts with the fool card and it's all about the fool's journey okay so you could be going on some journey oh beautiful okay if we get the devil card which we have here believe you me you want this little bugger in reverse and that's exactly what you've got freedom from freedom from attachment freedom from obsession freedom from bad habits and behaviors freedom from old karmic cycles exactly what we've got that Akashic Records energy for releasing the past in this lifetime and past lifetimes, you name it, the devil card here in reverse, you are making better choices, you are doing things a different way, you're leaving toxic situations, okay, and you are embracing the future, beautiful, 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 okay, some of you are clearing out your old karmic patterns and cycles, all right, and this gives you this sense of freedom, beautiful energy. Okay. Very exciting for you guys. This is just such a powerful and important year for you, Scorpio. It's just not even funny. Like it's just, oh, it's just got this sense of excitement. Um, just wonderful. June, here's where justice comes in. Okay. Karma intervenes. All right. And you know, with that devil card, you've been clearing out some past karmic cycles, toxic situations, behaviors, you name it. And here we are with the justice card. Okay. Bringing you in solutions, um, bringing you in some fairness, equality, and balance into your life. The justice card can sometimes also represent judicial situations, legal situations, contracts, anything that you're signing your name to. All right. Anything official. Okay. And, but this shows that if there's judgments that are being passed along, that they are balanced and they are fair. Okay. Um, that's those scales of justice, that Libra and energy that comes in here, fairness, balance, and equality for all. The justice card also brings in the sword of fate, the sword, the sword of truth, honesty, the sword of um, you know, finding those solutions. Okay. Um, so the hand of fate may intervene here. Okay. You certainly have got good karma on your side and maybe even new beginnings as well with that justice card there. All right. And think of say, you know, you're manifesting, um, let's say you're manifesting a new job, right? Here you go. You're setting your intentions. You're letting things go. You're not obsessing over anything. Okay. You've got this great sense of adventure and maybe you have an opportunity that, uh, you know, that comes at you, but you just need to trust and you need to take that leap and it's like I'm not sure exactly if I can do that job but you know what let's go for it all right and that justice card may have you signing a job contract a job offer okay something that is really important okay but again you could also have some legal situations now I mean the you know the devil card here in reverse with the fool it could be freedom from a toxic relationship okay something like that and the justice card may show like the finalization of a divorce or something like that and it just um brings in this little bit more of a refreshing energy for you and then we also have the four of cups solutions where you didn't expect to have one um the four of cups is quite often an energy of detachment of boredom of apathy of feeling as though oh i don't know you're about to give up and just as you're about to give up there's something here so keep an open mind keep an open heart okay because sometimes this four of cups something hits us out of left field all right and with the justice card here as well okay you, there could certainly be something that you're not expecting okay or something that you thought would never pan out for you okay but you do need to look at the bright side of the coin there look at your solutions instead of your problems engage where you feel disengaged okay and maintain a positive outlook where just you're about to like oh i don't know 
because there's some excitement here with the fool and then sometimes we do get a little bit impatient here so keep an open mind look for alternate possibilities okay because there's something coming in here that's wonderful for you all right but you need to be ready to embrace it okay so july and july we have the emperor here we step into our personal power may we get into a position of strength of secure security of stability the emperor puts you in the driver's seat puts you in a position of power all right you're feeling confident you're feeling bold all right and you're starting to enjoy the fruits of your labor i mean again think of like a new job that comes in the four of cups right maybe this opportunity that comes in you're like oh my god i don't know if i can do it i don't know if i have the skills to do it and the emperor comes in and goes yes you do Okay, take back your power. If you don't know the answer to something, you can find the solution. All right, you can research your possibilities. If something's not going your way, you can change course of action. All right, some of you might be a little bit afraid of stepping into a leadership role. The emperor is the ultimate leader. So it just shows that you, it shows the, what you can achieve, shows your potential, okay, to make it to the top of whatever that looks like for you. The emperor can also sometimes be an advice card. So there may be a really important person in your life, okay, that you can ask for some help, support, and guidance from, especially if you're feeling stuck, okay, they might just show up at the right place at the right time. It can be a business partnership. It can be, you know, a new friend. Um, it can be a new romance, all right, but it can also be somebody that you know, trust, and respect that can give you some really good advice. They have no alternate mo alternate motions, uh, how should I say alternative what is that word oh uh any uh alternate motivations or anything like that okay their only motivation is to give you some good advice we've got the three of coins here as well the three of coins is one of creation but it's also one of partnerships the three of coins shows that there's somebody that is a leader and that there's someone that is being led so this can go either way you could be partnering up with people, all right? You might actually be the one that, one of the ones that is the student, okay, or that is being led by someone who um, is someone who you really look up to, someone that you respect, okay? This could be a teacher, it could be a boss, all right? It can be, you know, someone that you're working on a project with, okay? You name it, but they've got some really good advice. Um, as far as a, interesting, um, there's a little bit of a relationship vibe here, okay, um, you know, uh, especially with this being right beside the Justice card, okay, and the Four of Cups. For some of you, if there's some relationship struggles that are coming in here, okay, there's some truths being revealed, okay, people are being honest. The Four of Cups shows that there may be an opportunity to salvage the situation. And with the Emperor and the Three of Coins, it could be you and your person maybe going to counseling of some sort, all right, just somebody that is a, a neutral third party that is giving you some guidance and that is helping you repair and helping you rebuild and to move forward. But the three of coins with the emperor can also show you stepping into that leadership role, you taking the bull by the horns, you creating something, being a project leader, a manager, a supervisor, big boss kind of role as well. Okay, um, really being in that seat, really having that sense of accomplishment to create something wonderful. All right. And, you know, but the emperor brings in a bit of an um, entrepreneurial energy as well. And that three of coins shows that, you know, you may have an entrepreneurial spirit, you may be able to build your own kind of empire, right? Because the emperor rules an empire, not just a kingdom. Okay, all four kings rolled into one, right? So it's really kind of an action oriented um, kind of energy there. So if you do have some entrepreneurial uh, opportunities there, as some people may, with the three of coins, you could possibly be expanding a business, okay? Um, or maybe something is really successful right off the bat. And right away, you have a couple of employees, right? Um, you could also be just partnering up with the right people, okay? Maybe you have the creative uh, ability, okay? Or maybe you have the business acumen, but maybe you've got someone else that can you can partner up with. Maybe they have like the financial backing or something or, you know, so in some way you may actually be partnering up with someone else as many as two people, okay? But you all have a common goal in mind and you have the ability to create something wonderful,
August. August, we take a little bit of a time out. Whew, thank goodness. Okay, it's busy. Okay, busy year. The hanged man is where we need to take a step back from something. Okay, this brings in a patient energy. Also brings in an energy of surrender or sacrifice. So there may be a situation where you just need to go with the flow. Okay, you need to just surrender to the energies that are going on around you, to situations that are around you, because sometimes there's things that you can change and sometimes you just need to let things unfold. There may also be a situation here where you might feel the need to sacrifice something, okay? And not like in a negative way, all right, but sometimes, you know, sometimes again, we just take a step back. Maybe you're in a situation where you let someone have their way or, you know, you might just decide not to pursue something. But the hanged man also just brings an energy of patience, this time out, okay? You're, um, you know, a situation where you may need to take a step back and evaluate your, your situation, your circumstance, other people. Even, okay, the hanged man is where we do take that step back. We look at the big picture view. That way we gain a different perspective. You could even be in a situation where you see someone else's point of view or where you need to see someone else's point of view. Where is someone else coming from? All right, and this actually puts you in an, in a position where you're gaining some enlightenment, those light bulb moments, those aha moments, those big picture moments, the big thinking moments. All right, this could be where you're um, brainstorming a little bit, getting some ideas for the future. All right, thinking about what's important to you. But it does bring about a little bit of time out and this slower energy. And we've got the page of coins coming here as well. So there could certainly be some sort of financial uh, thing that you're dealing with. Maybe there's an investment opportunity, okay, or even an expansion opportunity here. And you need to really think about it very, very, um, you need to think about it from all angles and all levels. Some of you with the page of coins, you may be looking to start some sort of new financial endeavor, of course, but maybe even a new home, um, a purchase of some sort, a new job. Okay. Maybe there's an ability here to, um, you know, further your level of commitment to something. The coins, the pentacles energy can represent commitment. All right, but the page of coins is quite often um, a sign of manifestations coming to fruition, okay? Um, but it is something here that can certainly lead you on the path to um, prosperity, abundance, all right? And it is, uh, it brings you in a little bit of luck maybe as well, okay? But again, maybe something that you really need to take a step back and you really need to think about the big picture, right? Because sometimes we have an opportunity and we're not really too sure about it. And we do need to think about something before we actually commit. Okay, so you could certainly have that going on there. September. Ha ha. Good fortune on your side. Expect some surprises here by the time we get to September. Okay, and this is your lucky day. Okay, uh, lady luck, good fortune on your side. This is a period of increase for you. All right, which is pretty good since the month before we're thinking about something to do with the page of coins, okay? So expect some lucky breaks, the green lights, okay? Things working out in your favor, obstacles overcome. All right, good fortune headed your way, okay? This is the big old yes card as well, okay? So, you know, it is uh, sometimes brings things in as a little bit of a surprise though. So expect the unexpected when we get the wheel of fortune and holy kitten caboodles, Batman, we've got the king of coins coming out here with this now. Ooh, this is big luck, okay? Big luck, big success, lots of value. This has to do with your worth, your self-worth. I mean, holy moly, if you are starting, a, if, you've, if you have a new financial endeavor, a new job, anything like that, this starts out with the page of coins and we, auto, and we all of a sudden go into the king energy, that is a big return on investment for some of you there. This is where you really um, have this sense of accomplishment, achievement, success. Okay, this is where you're feeling rich. You're feeling prosperous and abundant in all forms. Okay, um, this is fantastic energy coming in. Now, of course, this could have to do something. This could have to do with a commitment to something as well. Maybe a commitment to a person. Okay, maybe things are just working out exactly as you wanted them to. All right, whatever that happens to be, this is great energy, a lot of luck, good fortune. Okay, and things just really working out um, the way that you want them to or the way you didn't quite expect them to. 
October. Oh, ah, and there we go. Here is your energy. Here is your card. So we've got the death card coming up here in October. And of course, if you've got some good luck, some unexpected surprises headed your way in September, this is a life-changing event for some of you. The death card, it's like out with the old, in with the new. You could be leveling up, moving onwards and upwards in your situation, okay? The death card is sometimes also where we let something go, all right? So there could be some endings that come into, into your realm um, for the month of October. Now, it could possibly be that you've got some really good fortune headed your way, maybe uh, you know, you might even, well, I don't know. I mean, I wouldn't want to say that. Okay. I mean, buy, buy yourself a lottery ticket. Maybe. I don't know. Um, anyway, you never know. Okay. Uh, there's luck there. Do with that with, do with that as you will. Okay. But the, you know, something really big could be coming down the pipeline for you and some life changing event for the positive. Okay. Something that really does, um, you know, bring you in a lot of luck and prosperity could certainly be headed for some of you. But the death card is first and foremost about personal growth, spiritual growth, out with the old you, in with the new you, having a positive outlook, overcoming things. Um, it's a very transitional, transformational energy. You could literally just be stepping into your own personal sense of self-worth, Okay, and you're feeling good, you're feeling confident, you're embracing changes, and you're really looking forward to the future. All right, and we've got the seven of coins here, but you're taking your time. And you know, the death card, you know, the wheel of fortune brings in kind of a sudden burst of um, burst of energy. Okay, those surprises and things like that. The death card is a slower energy, it's a more gentler transformation. Okay, it's not big, sudden change most of the time, sometimes it can be. But with the seven of coins here, this could certainly be your financial situation changing, um, um, your personal beliefs, okay, your personal values are changing, right? And you're evaluating your situation with the seven of coins, you're being very patient. But if this has to do with your values, your personal growth, you're looking at where you are and you're like, okay, um, what do I still believe? Do I believe in this? Do I believe in this? What do I need to do? Am I on the right path? You could be doing a little bit of soul searching um, in that month as well. Okay, but you could certainly have some financial things to contemplate. Okay, and is this worth a change? Or do I want to keep going where I am? All right, and that seven of coins brings a calm, practical evaluation. Okay, looking at the reality of things. Oh, ha, take the reality check. Okay, um, so there is change, transformation that's on the horizon for you. And, you know, should you choose to embrace that there? Let's move on to November and see what November holds for you. Oh, look at this. Beautiful. We've got the sun, success abundance, prosperity, optimism, joy, beautiful energy, this big burst of energy, happy life, happy family, happy everything. So whatever surprises are coming in, whatever changes are evolving, this brings you um, to your ultimate um, joy, happiness, okay? Um, feeling good, feeling confident, feeling bold, feeling inspired, all of these wonderful things, okay? Gives you a lot of energy, a lot of pep in your step, all right? It could even be like the, the birth of a brand new Scorpio and you're just feeling good about yourself, okay? You could also possibly be thinking about family, Okay, family, babies, children, okay, things like this. I mean, the Empress card way over here in March. Okay, the Empress card, let's face it, is sometimes a pregnancy card. All right, and how many months is that? And let's say one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Huh, well, look at that. Okay, so some of you may actually be giving birth to something, uh, to a person, a human, hopefully. Um, and that makes you very, very happy because the Sun card can quite often represent children. Okay, and March all the way through to November. Yeah, that sounds about right. Okay, so you never know. <laughs> okay, you just never know. But it may not be you. It may also be other people. But this could be where you actually focus on your family, your children, maybe expanding your family unit in some way as well. But ultimate joy and happiness with the sun card. Let's see what's attached to. Ah, interesting. Attached to the four of coins. So you could certainly have a lot of happiness, joy, and success in regards to money. The four of coins, maybe you have enough money and a lot of uh, enough prosperity that you can put some money in the bank, save for a rainy day. 
the four of coins it certainly does bring in um, stability, security, okay? And it, known as the miser of the tarot sometimes, sometimes it does reveal that there's something that you need to spend some money on. So you may actually have a large purchase of some sort, but one that makes you really happy dipping into your savings. But on the other token, okay, you could also be putting some money away. Maybe you've got enough financial prosperity, okay, and some uh, growth in your financial um, realm that you can actually put some money away for the future. But whatever that is, okay, very, very happy energy bringing you stability and security. Let's see what December holds. Oh, look at this. The final release, the final judgment, seeing, looking back upon the year, okay, looking upon, upon your past, seeing the truth, everything coming to the surface, coming to light, final release and let go of anything negative, anything challenging, anything in the past, okay? There may be some truths that are revealed to you, internal or external, all right? You're seeing the light at the end of the tunnel. You're seeing things clearly, all right? Anything that has still lingered that doesn't make you happy or that it's not part of your future out the door it goes the judgment card can also bring about you know the ability to realize your soul's purpose okay when we answer that call think of like the final judgment the apocalypse kind of thing sometimes as well right but your judgment day all right is when everything is revealed to you you see everything clearly you understand why you're here you understand um your place in the world as well Okay, but the judgment card can also represent reconciliation and second chances. So it could be that time where you're just finding your inner enlightenment and inner peace and anything that is not giving you that you're releasing and you're letting go. You're finding forgiveness in your heart, even those things that you, you know, maybe you think someone doesn't deserve forgiveness. That's not your place to say, okay, it's not your place to dish out someone else's karma, but for your own inner peace, sometimes you do need to find that forgiveness. And sometimes you see these crazy stories, you know, where you have, uh, you know, a parent, um, you know, like a mother, a father, and, you know, they're forgiving like a murderer or something. And, you know, you're like, how in the world can someone forgive that? If, if someone murdered my child or something, I could never forgive that. I would hold that hatred in my heart. But the reason that they find that forgiveness is not for the person who did wrong. It's for their own inner peace so that they can heal. They can move forward. They can't change what happened. They can't change the outcome of what happened. They need to deal with it, process it, and they need to let it go. Otherwise, it eats away at your soul. So there could certainly be some things that you are finding your way to forgive, to release, to let go for the betterment and for the good of your soul. Okay, the final culmination of a spiritual path, a spiritual journey. But again, you may also have some second chances that come back around. Okay, you may be reconciling with people in your life. Okay, people who um, maybe you haven't seen for a while, or you could even have like past friendships, past romances come back around, right? And you know, you're willing to embrace the future. Um, with that, you could even have job opportunities that come back around as well. But the Knight of Wands that comes out with this is a lot of excitement, okay? Forward movement, um, following your passion, your dream, taking some action, okay? And whatever this is, you're making decisions, you're following your passions, your dreams, and you're maintaining a wonderful positive energy, a positive outlook. And, you know, you're moving on, you're moving forward, okay? You're um, uh, ready for the next stage, the next phase of your life, but you may also have that Knight of Wands. You could possibly have a person that comes back into your life and maybe someone who previously didn't want to commit and now here they are. They're excited to be back into your life. They're asking for your forgiveness. They're asking for a second chance and you just may give it, but not unless there's all the cards laid out on the table, okay? But it's a beautiful energy, a very wonderful um, one, and wonderful energy of enlightenment, of growth, 
Okay, you're ready to wrap up a massive cycle and what greater energy to have coming in there for December. The release, the let go, the sense of freedom. You're ready for the next new year. There's some exciting things happening. Maybe you're reconciling with some old family members there possibly. Okay, family, I mean family's family. Uh, sometimes we like our family. Sometimes we don't like our family. Um, you know, so you never know. You could be having some sort of um, reconciliation with some family member. So... I'm going to leave that there for you guys, but I'm going to close out your reading here with a couple of magical spell casting cards for you. A lot of exciting energy that's coming in here for your year ahead, some ups and downs, but a lot of magic is really in the air. So I'm going to get you three of these. So last messages, please, for Scorpio. One, two, and I'll get one more. Ooh. Oh, and we're getting four. Okay. Well, was only going to get three, but there's that magic four. Those two came out together. All right. So here we go. Here's our first one. Card number 36, study. Let my mind be clear and strong. Let me study well and long. And some of you, we already have this energy where you actually may be studying things, researching things. All right. We also have, why are these upside down? Anyways, we also have number 35. Interesting. 35, 36. Victory. I shall celebrate and I shall rise. I will let victory make me wise. Okay. This is that big old yes. Okay. The accomplishment of whatever you set your mind to. All right, here's uh, number 44. Look at those fours. Okay, new beginnings. Let this magic in my spell clear the space in which I dwell. All right, your ability to have new things into your life. Say yes, 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 yes. Okay, there's those fours again. And we also have number 42, organization, purpose, planning, efficiency, now come to me so easily. There's that organization getting your priorities in line. Okay. I'm going to leave that there for you guys. A lot of excitement in your year ahead. A lot of wonderful energy. So I hope there was something here that resonated for you. Don't forget to check back a little bit later in the year. You may also want to check your rising sign most predominantly. And um, yeah, probably mostly your uh, rising sign. But you might also want to check your moon sign as well. Um, it go over to those readings. So whatever those happen to be, you'll get a lot more information there. And certain things will uh, click for you a little bit stronger maybe. So if you did enjoy this reading, and I hope you did, please give me that good old thumbs up by hitting that like button there, subscribe to my channel, and uh, if you hit the notification bell, you'll always get that little bit of a uh, heads up on your mobile device whenever I do put up a new reading, which is quite frequently actually. So I thank you for watching, and I will see you next time. Bye-bye.